to this new episode of CNS Dialogues for Sustainable Development, which is a special CNS series featuring uh, interviews, uh, rather thought-provoking and insightful interviews from leaders to accelerate progress towards attaining the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. And ending AIDS is one such goal. And we have just 133 months le left to achieve that goal. Moreover, we have just over a year left to achieve the 90-90-90 UN AIDS target. Mm -hmm. And are we on track for that? We will hear more from our special guest today, uh, on site from the 12th National Conference of the AIDS Society of India, which is taking place in Chennai. And this, new, this episode of CNS Dialogues features a very special guest we have with us, Professor Adiba Kamarulu Zaman, who is the President-Elect of International Aid Society. She'll be taking over her office in July 2020, I believe. And she is presently the Dean of Faculty of Medicine at University of Malaya. And she also established the first infectious disease unit there, I believe, mm -hmm. you know, back, in mm -hmm. back in 97. Mm -hmm. And also the related HIV research center. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Adiba, Thank to you. this. Thank you, uh, Adiba, where are we in terms of HIV prevention and treatment in the context of achieving the SDG goal of ending AIDS by 2030 and also the UN AIDS target? Yes. Obviously, I think globally there has been remarkable progress. Uh, one can't deny that with um, the advances in uh, the knowledge of HIV prevention um, as well as the you know, wonderful treatment that has uh, been made available in the last few years um, uh, that has resulted in the decline of new infections. Um, you know, many, many millions of people are on treatment and uh, as a result, uh, a, a general decline in the number of people dying from HIV AIDS. So yes, overall we're seeing um, progress um, and some countries um, and communities are well on track uh, to achieve the 1990 goals, namely, um, you know, cities like San Francisco, London, Bangkok, um, and even uh, cities in uh, South Africa, uh, sorry, in, in, in Africa, and, um, and, and countries like Cambodia, and uh, even places like Taiwan. So, I think it's fair to say that overall, yes, uh, from where we were two decades ago to where we are now, we're seeing great progress. Uh, number two, um, there are wonderful examples of uh, countries and communities doing very well. However, uh, I'm sad to say, I think in Asia, we seem to be uh, a little behind even uh, in even Africa in terms of achieving those uh, 1990 targets, 1990-90 targets, much less uh, the ending AIDS uh, goals. So I was uh, privileged to be at a uh, HIV program managers meeting of uh, program managers from Asia and the Pacific that was convened by UNAIDS last week where, you know, those data that I shared with you this morning um, were presented and uh, it's it's very sobering i think uh, to see that um, yes again countries like cambodia and even singapore um, thailand and to some extent india are doing great work uh, in in getting to those targets but um, in vietnam i think is another fine example um, but uh, many countries um, are struggling to to achieve even the first uh, 90 target, which is testing, much less uh, treatment. As, as I shared with you, um, the epidemic in Asia, the Pacific is um, very diverse, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, we're seeing infections amongst um, key populations. Different countries have different concentration. Um, in my own, we kind of went from an IDU epidemic to an MSM epidemic, which to a certain extent we're seeing that in um, uh, very much so in, Viet, uh, in, 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 in Taiwan uh, and, and to a lesser extent in Vietnam. Other countries have uh, a much more 
you know, female sex workers and partners uh, kind of epidemic. Others uh, like Pakistan um, also seeing um, a mixture of MSM and IG. So it, it's different countries will have to know their own epidemic uh, and, and respond accordingly. But uh, given those uh, diversity, that diversity and differences, what is common is that um, uh, you know overall uh, in each of the groups as a region, whether it's female sex workers, transgender women, uh, men who have sex with men, or people who inject drugs, overall the uh, first. 90 target is at best uh, seen at about 50% of key populations you know knowing the HIV status and uh, in terms of being on ARVs uh, again we're seeing um, the frustratingly and saddeningly, saddeningly low lowish numbers uh, nowhere near the 90 that we ought to be at so we have a lot of work to do and I think there are many reasons why uh, in Asia we, we're not um, seeing uh, um, the, the kinds of achievements that we're seeing in some countries in Africa. I think um, you know, the, 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 the fact that it, uh, you know, those at risk are already amongst people who are marginalised and stigmatised I think is a very, very important uh, reason people that these these populations are hidden, they're going to the internet uh, to reach out to each other and uh, you know social media has enabled um, you know this networking to take place away from uh, you know uh, and, and access to uh, or, ma or making it easier for people to connect um, and uh, and I guess the the overall general um, fatigue, I suppose, with the uh, provision of uh, knowledge, new mm. knowledge around uh, the effectiveness of treatment, around the effectiveness of pre-exposure prophylaxis, around uh, you know, the importance of uh, U equals U, all those messages, I think um, we, need, we need to, to do more to um, send those messages out to people who need to hear more about it. And so the conservatism, the, 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 the availability of the internet, the, um, the I guess the, the, uh, um, the other competing health um, issues. issues like uh, non-communicable diseases, diabetes, obesity, um, you know, gets the attention of the government more than HIV these days. And, uh, Funding many of our countries um, fall out of you know countries that need support uh, because of rising income status, um, and mm -hmm. so you know um, whether it's a global fund or, or, or PEPFAR, you know, and the beauty of those programs is they often come with te technical assistance. So when you don't uh, get access to those, you, you also um, you know have less access to. So there are all those things, but I think one of the strongest um, social determinant of uh, the rise in HIV is, I think, um, the stigma and discrimination that uh, befells uh, all of the key population groups in our region as most countries retreat towards uh, more conservatism. So, yes. So now what are the lessons we can learn from Africa? You mentioned that some mm -hmm. of the countries in Africa are doing mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. So um, what can we learn from them? Yes, yes. I think, you know, in Africa you hear successes around uh, community provision of care. You know, obviously in terms of healthcare worker shortages that we all experience, yes. but uh, it's even more severe in, in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. But they're able to deliver. Um, very innovative um, uh, interventions, whether it's task shifting uh, for the provision for the delivery of services or um, testing. Um, you know, the the uh, our African counterparts seem to be able to do it 
well. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the, are we, is there a shifting of focus from prevention? Are we not focusing enough on prevention? And uh, with the message going out that treatment is there, treatment is available. So, but, but, but you know, we, we seem, as the figures uh, mm-hmm. that I shared with you this morning mm-hmm. show, we, mm-hmm. we, we're falling short of both prevention and treatment. Treatment, yes. Okay. Um, you know, uh, prep uh, in this region, mm-hmm. for the most part, remains still, even in my own country, remains mm-hmm. demonstration, as de- demonstration projects. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, treatment, we, we're not getting to scale yet, uh, even in treatment. And so, but, but prevention, I mean, age-old preventions like condoms and needle syringe program, you know, are, are still way, way beyond, tar- below target. And I, 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 do, I don't think it's a question of either or. I think it has to we need a comprehensive um, treatment, prevention and treatment response. And uh, TB, tuberculosis plays a big role here because are we sometimes losing on the gains we are made, making in the fight against AIDS? Are we losing it to tuberculosis? Because uh, all said and done, TB being curable and treatable, a lot many people with HIV are still dying of tuberculosis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. what needs to be done there? Well, I think the answer to that would be early identification of the underlying HIV and early institution of treatment. There's no two ways about it, you know, because it is the immune suppression of uh, HIV and vice versa that increases the mortality of people co-infected with HIV and TB. So in order not to uh, have an escalation of the TB epidemic, we need to stop the HIV because they go hand in hand, unfortunately, in in countries that already have TB that's endemic, like yours and mine. Yes, and I think the new goals are that by 2022 globally, we have to put at least uh, I think uh, 6 million uh, mm-hmm. people with HIV on uh, TB preventive mm-hmm. treatment, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but still uptake of uh, TB preventive treatment is slow. I yes, think. yes. I think there are still uh, concerns over um, toxicity, still concerns over um, adherence mm-hmm. and development of resistance. Um, uh, there's, it's exciting that in the last few years there have been uh, a lot of uh, sort of a graveyard of uh, scientific development in TB diagnostics and TB treatment that we're seeing um, exciting new development in short courses for L- latent TB treatment, etc. So I think um, the field is getting more exciting, um, but nonetheless, I think in order to tackle the TB epidemic, we must tackle the HIV. And vice versa. And vice versa, yeah. Are there any special needs of the women by way of uh, TB, HIV care and control? Yeah, I think t- women um, uh, tend to fall um, off the cracks in, in countries like yours and mine. Um, you know, uh, we women often put ourselves um, um, backstage. Back, you know, we. we, 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 we we will care for our children and our partners before we care for ourselves. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and again, the, the stigma and discrimination and lack of disclosure uh, by partners to their women partners, all of these remain uh, as issues, I think, in countries like, like yours, like mine, where gender inequality is, uh, is still a problem. One, one issue that uh, I hope to take on, and uh, it's something that's been on the back of my mind, other than, than stigma and discrimination mm. when I take on the role yes. of, uh, H, of president of HIV, uh, of the IAS, IAS is um, I think one co-infection that we've not talked about a lot or enough is um, uh, HPV infection and cervical mm. cancer. As you know, WHO, um, uh, has got uh, you know an aspirational goal to end cervical cancer, yes. and I think this can absolutely be done. We have a vaccine. We have uh, wonderful new diagnostic methods to uh, to detect uh, HPV infection, 
and, uh, and, and, and just like TB, uh, cervical cancer, uh, you know, the, the progression in HIV positive women and men who get uh, anal cancer from HPV um, is much more, uh, it is faster than in those who are not co-infected with HIV. Mm -hmm. And so I think, uh, you know, as, as, as WHO uh, has highlighted the, the call to eliminate cervical cancer, I think that link uh, with HIV needs to be highlighted more, more and more. Um, I don't think enough has been talked about uh, globally uh, around the issues of HPV um, and cervical cancer and anal cancer in HIV co-infection. And, uh, and I think that the, the public health program is going to help make the HPV vaccine if it is yes, made part yes, of the public yes, health program. Yes, yes, yes. And I think this brings to light the need to, um, you know, and um, as, as a clinician, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, you're not just caring for someone with HIV. You, 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 you should be thinking about HIV, Hep C co-infection, TB right. co-infection, right. you know, uh, prevention for HPV so that that person-centered approach and likewise in public health for the public we, that we're not just worried about the, the HIV you know uh, uh, do our best to integrate uh, TB care substance uh, use care um, you know make sure that uh, you know regular uh, HPV testing um, uh, are all done yes we have great hopes and expectations from you, Adiba, oh. on taking on the gel. <laughs> Thank you. The, the, but, crown you has, know, the crown has its weight also. That yes, is. absolutely. And, and it's, you know, it's, uh, as you hear over and over again with uh, the HIV response, um, where uh, there has been success, it's not because of one person, it's not because of one uh, organization it truly takes a village and you know in, in, in um, you know countries like Australia where they led the world in, in many ways uh, in terms of the HIV response it it um, the, the response has been successful and you know they, they're really seriously getting close to eliminating HIV from rollout of PrEP and rollout of treatment and, and, and getting close to eliminating cervical cancer, etc., hep C, etc., yes. etc. And all this is, of course, number one, you need the political will, and the f and which goes with funding what? will. Number two, you need the science and the researchers and academia to work hand in hand with clinicians and importantly, with people who are affected or, or, or who are at risk. Uh, and I think that coming together, um, a truly multi-sectoral totally. response, not just in name, but right. uh, in, in deeds. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, your message for ICASA 2019, and we are media partners for ICASA, mm -hmm. which is taking place in uh, Rwanda. Right, so, right. So, um, because you have mentioned also that Africa is uh, taking some and, good and, steps. And yes, and yes. Rwanda, for instance, you know, a country with GDP much, much lower than mine, um, yes, yes. than Malaysia, and, and yet you, you're hearing some really wonderful examples in, in Rwanda. And I think, uh, you know, um, uh, it, it, you know, sharing of, uh, of the achievements and successes and of models is, is very important. Um, and also, you know, um, uh, to, to, to continue to be, uh, you know, a, a, a good example and um, a beacon of hope uh, for those of uh, other countries who are looking to implement and uh, scale up the effective responses, whether it's prevention or treatment. Yes. And any out-of-the-box approach you would su suggest in context of the approaching World AIDS Day on of this yeah, so you know, as as the world retreat towards more conservatism, and as the um, uh, virtual space becomes where people meet, uh, and uh, so I think, likewise, we need to use the Internet of Things much mm. more to uh, to to reach out to to those um, to those at risk. It's, it's hardly out of the box, but um, it's not, yes. I think it's, it's something that we're not doing enough. Yeah. yeah. 
anything which we are not doing enough i think can be termed out of the box <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. any questions from do you have yeah there is one probably she has addressed but still uh, with increasing life expectancy of people living with hiv uh, is there a need for more collaboration with ncd programs absolutely and uh, it's something that my colleagues and i at um, at university of malaya are looking at uh, the whole issue of hiv and aging um yes and um you know it, it's not just ncds but um, frailty and uh, you know all the uh natural consequences that come uh, with aging but uh, seem to be uh, you know taking place earlier in people with, with hiv i think all those things definitely will need to be addressed and then you have the um, you go back to having issues around pill burden and you know um, fatigue with treatment etc so yes the time has come to start looking into these things and obviously um, in in uh, low and middle income countries where diagnosis is as i showed you before uh, occurs much later than in in developed countries uh, uh, right now and and patients you know are entering treatment with uh, much lower cd4 counts much more immunosuppressed the uh, development of um, you know although although um, you know they survive through those episodes but obviously uh you know with with much less um healthy uh, uh beings yeah okay thank you adipa my pleasure uh, friends in this episode of cns dialogues for sustainable development we were listening to professor adipa kamarul zaman uh, from uh, who is the president elect for international aid society on site from the 12th national conference of aid society of india which is taking place in chennai Thank you and stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you.